Uh, this morning we are going to be doing a tour of Blue Sky Cellar with our Imagineers and team from Pixar Animation, the theme park team. And they're going to be telling you um, a lot more about what's coming to Pixar Pier. Of course, right now Pixar Fest is still continuing and goes all the way through September 3rd and Pixar Pier opens during that time. So I'm going to have the wonderful team introduce themselves um, and tell them, you can, they'll tell you a little bit about what they do and then we'll start with the storyline of Pixar Pier. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Shaver Moskowitz. I'm the executive regional producer for Walt Disney Imagineering Pacific, overseeing the Disneyland Resort and Aulani Resort in Hawaii. And I'm also the producer for Pixar Pier. Hi, I'm Tracy Nose. I'm the creative director for The Incredicoaster. Um, do all of the cool design work and make things pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Roger Gould. Uh, from Pixar Animation Studios, the creative director of our theme parks group, and we collaborate with Walt Disney Imagineering anywhere around the world where the Pixar characters and stories appear. I'm Tasha Sonart. I also work with Roger in the theme parks group at Pixar, and um, yeah, I'm helping out with a lot of the different things in Pixar Pier. Hi, I'm Tracy Hollis, and I'm a show director with Disney Live Creative Entertainment here at the Disneyland Resort. Great, take it away. Okay. So, welcome to Pixar Pier. Um, like all of our ideas, it starts with the what if. Um, what if we had a place where all of our Pixar characters uh, could live and have a home in one area? Uh, looking at the pier, we had this great anchor of Toy Story Midway Mania, one of our, our key attractions here at Disney California Adventure. And uh, we had a wonderful coaster that didn't have any theme or story. And uh, so we started talking about what are some story explorations we could do there. The Incredibles 2 was coming out. Um, and so we started talking about how awesome would this be to have an Incredibles ride, one of the first Incredibles rides, uh, the first Incredibles ride we've ever done uh, here in Disney yeah. California Adventure. And you know, it, Incredibles, since the very first film, of a Pixar, we've been waiting and hoping to bring them to life in the park because they're such a perfect park story, right? They're a family that's constantly swinging between the mundane of, you know, which exit should we take to fight the superhero and, you know, and the fantastic of actually doing these battles and using their extraordinary powers, which is actually the guest experience, right? You're in that, that line, it could be a little mundane, and you go on these extraordinary experiences on our attractions. So we're really thrilled we're going to bring them to life. And they're inspired to say, well, that's a really cool idea for the coaster. How can we really re-theme re and, and rethink the, what the pier is. And we came up with this notion of these neighborhoods. We said we want, our guests want to go into these stories, and that's what we want to really create. And so we've created these four neighborhoods. Uh, Incredibles Park, obviously anchored by the Incredicoaster. Uh, we had Toy Story Mania, so it obviously became the centerpiece of the Toy Story Boardwalk. And we can talk a little bit about our, our carousel that we're adding into that experience. And then uh, we have our Pixar Promenade, which really honors the, the kind of the heart of the, the pier, which is this classic turn of the century boardwalk experience. You want to talk a little bit about kind of our inspiration for that? Yeah, um, when we started uh, looking at the pier, we knew that this is a classic California pier and always will be. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that as we went through, we even plussed up some of the storytelling of the classic California pier brought to life by Pixar. So we started up at Pixar with a brainstorm, started from there and took a, a trip down the California seaboard to the amusement piers um, of California. I really inspired a, a lot by Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. There's a, a lot of great architecture and these great jewel tone colors of, of the pier. It's not all just whitewashed wood. It's, it's some really bright poppy colors, which plays really nicely with our Pixar story. Um, and, and color story there as well. So you'll see that uh, in the Pixar entry area, in these onion domes and things, these are some real California architectural inspiration points. And so the Pixar Promenade is a place we're celebrating all the different stories, just as you've seen in Pixar Fest. We've just been so thrilled to see the guests embracing and excited to get to meet and experience all these different stories from our studio. So this is gonna be that permanent home for all of them. And then coming next year, uh, we're going to expand with our fourth neighborhood, which will be the Inside Out headquarters. And we're really thrilled to create the first ever Inside Out park attraction. So uh, it's really going to be fun. Really exciting. And that one is coming at a later date. That one, we just haven't announced that one quite yet. Okay. So, yeah, so I don't know if we should slide on down. So, yeah, our this entry. is uh, your welcome to Pixar Pier. Think of this as kind of our main street. This is your welcome to the pier. So, you're welcome by this beautiful marquee with the Pixar lamp. Up on top, uh, we've already announced he'll be arriving at a later date, but he'll have some really fun 
uh, animation down towards the guests as they enter and, and leave the pier area. And then uh, right beyond the marquee, we've got Nick's Knacks. Hopefully you've already experienced Nick's Knacks. A, a wonderful store. All Pixar merchandise. Really, really great merchandise. And we're celebrating the art of, you know, because when we thought about, you know, Pixar isn't a story, right? So when we started talking about creating a Pixar pier, we said, well, we really want to celebrate the stories of the studio, but we also wanted to celebrate the artists and stories that happen within the studio. So Nick Snacks really celebrates the art of, and if you go in there, there is an artist desk, a live artist working. We celebrate it with a concept and storyboard art from the films, and, and we've seen the guests really, really enjoying that. And then right across from uh, Nick Snacks will be Lamplight Lounge. Tasha, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we've been working on this uh, this lounge, and it's a stylish, fun spot where the whole family can come and all um, eat some awesome food and get some good drinks. And it's also a place where we are. It's the storytelling we're doing there is that it's a, it's an old warehouse space that's been renovated, and the Pixar regulars have come there and left lots of cool memorabilia and cool sketches and photos and there's going to be just tons of cool stuff to look at and awesome little secrets to find in there. Yeah. yeah. I love this. Uh, very gastro pubby. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a really fun collaboration. And Harley Jessup, who is a production designer, he designed Coco and Ratatouille and Monsters Inc. When we started working on this, like, it's as if we need kind of like a Pixar <laughs> artist who's designed restaurants like Ratatouille, Harley, and he had just come <laughs> off of Coco. And he was just a fantastic partner. And he said this thing that I just love. When we came down and working with Charlie Kowalski, who you're going to see later and hear more about the lounge, but uh, Harley said when they were making Coco, they wanted to be so authentic that anyone from Mexico, anyone from that culture who saw it would feel like, oh, they got it right. I feel like Mexico. And he said, that's what I want the Lamplight Lounge to be for Pixar artists. That when the Pixarians come down and we walk into a space that isn't a replica of any experience that we have actually at the studio, but it should just feel so authentically right that a picture of people are like, oh, yeah, I'm home. Uh, continuing down around the corner, uh, you'll probably already, if you walk the lane, you'll see uh, that we have our adorable snowman snow cones. Insane hit with the guests already. The line is crazy long. If you want one, to get one early. It might be your breakfast because um, that's the only way to get in there. Um, but doing really well. Uh, did a search for this the other day, and all I see is Instagram photos of the Pixar ball parfait in front of it. People are, are really loving that. And then we have also our billboards as uh, you continue down around the corner towards Incredibles Park. Uh, there's so many wonderful Pixar characters, and we have so many stories we want to delve into. Um, there were some we just couldn't dedicate an area to, so we said, how do we introduce all these other characters that are people's favorites? Up, Wally, uh, Finding Dory, all these wonderful stories. So we're, we find other ways to pepper them uh, throughout the pier, and some of those are our, our billboards. Yeah, including Coco, and that's actually the early concept art for the, the billboard. Yeah, we want to celebrate the whole family with Miguel, of course, putting out performance. So then as you turn down around that corner, our next neighborhood to bring you to is Incredibles Park. So, uh, Incredibles is my favorite Pixar film. I love it. And I'm a California native. I was actually born in Palm Springs, so if it looks Palm Springs, that's because you know, I've been there a couple of times. Um, we went through a lot of different iterations. There's a, little, a lot of fun challenges that you kind of have to work with for an existing attraction. How to bring it into a very stylized world of Incredibles. So at the end of the day, we ended up working with uh, Incredibles 2 production team and really kind of hand in hand up with Pixar. And the design that we kind of came up with was drawn on a napkin in the middle of lunch. It probably has some fish sauce on it. It's lovely. Um, but that's kind of how that arose. And so we just really tried to do this area with some funky shapes, like you can see with the roof line there. Um, everything's sort of based on triangles and circles. We have a very amazing artist named Teddy Newton who is doing murals for us. So mid-century modern architecture can be a little bit drab in, in terms of color, so we have three huge hand-painted murals that are done by this amazing artist, and they're all very, very stylized. So you can see a portion of, of it up here. Teddy was one of the original designers on the first Incredibles film. I uh, was one of the artists that Brad Bird actually brought up to Pixar with him to make the film. And so it was fantastic to go back to him and, and have him expand that story. And you can see his, what his work looks like at the end credits of Incredibles. And now he's working on that in credits for Incredibles too. So really excited about that. And we just started painting this today. So I'm like, oh, we're doing it. And they're really excited. Sorry. 
Yeah, it's kind of hilarious. We're, it's really fun to get to tell you all about this thing that's going to be open in a month, and then as soon as we're done, we're going back to keep finishing it. Yes. So. <laughs> I think I paint on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we have the new, new uh, vehicle graphics that are coming out. You might have seen them in the Disney Plus Plus already. Um, you see the trains probably going by with the orange and red paint. Those are going to have graphics on very soon. You might see that in the next couple of So, story near and dear to all of our hearts is food. Um, <laughs> and it's our fear. Uh, it's really different from that. So, continuing in Incredibles part, uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about that. But uh, Jack Jack's Cookie Num Nums will be featured there. Uh, you got to get pay your hands on the cookie. It's incredible. Um, oh, yeah, and then within the Toy Story Boardwalk, well, we have Buzz, he's in Spanish mode, so we have Senior Buzz Churros, and everything that we're bringing into our Toy Story Boardwalk neighborhood, we're trying to play out that literally toy story. So everything is a giant, oversized object to really give you the, that fun feeling of being immersed as you are when you ride Toy Story Mania and you've shrunk down to the size of the toy. Yeah, so this other uh, food kiosk that we have is a giant uh, poultry palace one meal box, and it's inspired by our Toy Story 2 short that's called Small Fry. And then here in front is a fun size Zerd that you can take your photo with. <laughs> yeah. It's just so fun to bring those things like, and then uh, over in the Pixar Promenade, we're celebrating uh, anger. Oh yeah, so anger is going to be selling hot dogs of different spiciness levels, so as he gets more angry, the hot dogs get more spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Food Service Team have a lot of fun with condiments, you know, spicy sriracha, spicy mustard, yeah. all these different layers and levels of spicy fun. Yeah. And then right next door in the Pixar Promenade, you know, we've really played, we wanted to celebrate lots of different Pixar stories. And one of the centerpieces, of course, was the Mickey's Fun Wheels now being rechristened the Pixar Power Hour. Yeah, so we actually created brand new character art for all of the gondolas. And the artist was Ron Kogi, who has done a lot of artwork for Disney uh, merchandise. And one idea that we really wanted to do for the Power Round was um, focus on the friendships in all the different Pixar films. So there are 12 pairs of friends from the different films. So you see Miguel here, and then we've got Hector on a different gondola. That's his his friend. Um, and uh, I, I really like how all our friends are. I think it's, it's super cute. Well, it's been fun Pixar Fest is really a celebration of friendship. And, you know, we've all been just so excited to see that you know, we're not celebrating the moves, we're celebrating this emotional connection that our guests have to our characters and our story. And it's been amazing to see the response and that really that same spirit kind of inspired the power round. We wanted to keep that excitement and emotional connection that our guests have to the friendships within the films and the friendships that of course you, you come to the park and celebrate. Uh, also in Pixar Promenade, we've got uh, a band show moment. This is where our Pixar Philharmonic will be playing after they're done. Uh, when the, the pier opens, they've started now for Pixar Fest, <coughs> playing in the back of the park. This will be a permanent home. Uh, also, your Pixar friends might get a chance to have a meet and greet here uh, with them. Then we have the games of the boardwalk just off the side of this uh, image. And so we've taken those and turned those into Pixar stories too. So we're telling stories with Maluna and Wally and uh, Heimlich. We've got uh, a little sample of what uh, Heimlich's uh, marquee is going to be for candy corn toss up there. Um, really fun, fun colors, fun characters. Um, you know, we wanted to pay attention to the shorts as well. You know, people love the feature films. People really love the Pixar shorts. And they have some really great characters there. So Maluna was a great chance for us to bring those into, into this area. Yeah. And then uh, right to the right of the van shell will be the Bing Bong Sweet stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a candy shop that we've been working on and we just thought that Bing Bong from Inside Out was the perfect uh, character to have here because he cries candy tears. <laughs> so, yeah. Happy so, here, friend. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we'll be telling you a little bit more about the candy shop that yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. And then a new centerpiece of the land, much like with the giant sphere over in Tomorrowland that's amazing, the waterfall that people love playing with. Well, we like one of those. So the Pixar ball can be brought to life with phenomenal uh, marble uh, <laughs> sphere for family and kids to go ahead and interact with. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and also uh, bring to this area a lot more shade, a lot more seating, a lot more comfort for guests. So this is an area that's not just an area you move through, it's an area where you sit take a break and really enjoy this park-like atmosphere. Yeah, it's really been fantastic. We're completely redoing all of the 
really the buildings, not just the, not just a paint job. We're actually changing the architecture to try and really capture that spirit of those classic boardwalks that we saw throughout California. 